Okay. So the transform a layer just allows me to, as long as I hit the shift button while I'm making it a little bigger, it'll make the whole piece bigger uniformly. Scooch it a little bit. All right, I think that's good. Good, huh? Yeah. Okay, so now we've done a little finessing to it. We have a decent looking image. Uh, we have a perfect copy, basically. And we can go back in now anytime and, and pop different colors on it. Um, we'll save, you can save yourself a cop, a work group copy of the dress so that you can come back in and then just make 15 different color dresses if you want. Okay, so here we go. We've, we've worked on this part and we're happy with it. We have a working group. So the next thing that we need to do is just delete these copies. Just go ahead and hit the trash can sign. Okay, so now this is what is going to pack and there's nothing else in there and I'm going to say save as okay so we're going to just keep moving <laughs> yeah let's stay with the right part okay so we're going to just keep moving through and then all I'm going to do is uh, underscore and we'll say blue And it's going to pack that as a PNG image for me. And I'm just going to say OK. Perfect. OK, so now in this case, since we're um, we're back here at the cartoon animator I'm gonna go ahead now and bring this part in so it's super simple I'm gonna come in here and say add a new element and I'm already let's say if I was selecting the hip group I would say add a new element and here's the one that we uh, whoop, eh, this is where I should have put it um, let's go ahead and come up one the images folder where stash this one and I'm putting it in different spots let's see yeah the hip group here we go blue okay so now if I had an empty cell here or the, if a feature I could ever request here on cartoon animators that they would let have a button right here that says duplicate this hip group then I could have a blank to work with and then I could come in and bring the picture in as replace the current element which will bring it in exactly the size that I wanted it um, so anyway since it brings it in a little a little convoluted it's no big deal um, you're gonna resize this dress she doesn't have a super large neck And so where you'll learn, though, is to click back and forth. And you'll see whether or not, see how she's just a little too wide. Okay, Otherwise, pretty good positioning around the neck. To kind of go back and forth. The dress is too long and it's too wide. So I'm still, the dress is too big. And a shorter neck. Character up. To be as good as him. Or, hey, that's, that's pretty close. It's, you know, um, and, and so obviously you can go and finesse it till it's perfect. Uh, but for the sake of this lesson, here we go. I can dress her now uh, in the blue dress or the red dress, just as easy as that. And so as you keep working through this, then we go ahead and close the sprite editor. And uh, you would pick your next part. 
the shoes, the arms. There's one arm up the top. Okay, so these are all the ones that you would go in and just simply do the exact same process that I just showed you on the body. And you work through the parts. And it really doesn't take that long. And once you're done with this, then of course you have that working file. You can come in, change the clothes colors over and over. And that's how you can do this with pretty much any image. This is uh, this image was a bitmap, um, or a, and saved as a Photoshop, I believe. I'm if I might be speaking out of turn, but I believe it was a a Photoshop save. Um, somewhere in the back of my mind, I have bitmap. But anyway, there you go. That's how you do that. Uh, it's pretty cool, huh? Okay, so um, since it's in the sprite editor, you don't have to worry about uh, saving that permanently into the character. It's already it's already in here, so we're just going to go ahead and come out of here, and uh, I'm done. I can go ahead and bring a different actor in, work on them, take them in. But that's the that's a really cool way to go in without it being super confusing um, in, in Krita. Um, took me about three days and watching about 35 videos before I found, and somebody didn't even show this, I just actually observed somebody else colorizing a logo and it gave me this idea to, to come in and approach this like this. Um, so, the next thing I'll try to learn is how to turn this into a colorized vector. I, I was doing that earlier today, and then I kind of got caught up on the, the painting, these accent colors and all that. And I finally realized I was spending a lot of time for probably some, nothing because I was never really ever going to change this. So, okay. So anyway, not to drag this on too long. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that was helpful for you. And uh, you have a wonderful day. We'll see you on the next one. Okay, guys, one more thing I wanted to show you here is that, uh, you know, when you start start making characters and saving characters whenever you're whenever you're starting out with a character you're basically getting it from here from the, either the template item or the template pack okay and here i've highlighted this one so it doesn't open them but i have you know quite a quite a few packs of different characters and um and so anyway We'll click click on the actors in my folder, and when whenever I grab one from the template side rather than the custom side, and I do any work on it, and I save the character up here, save as, the, and sit, when I'm in composer mode and I save the character, then it saves her as a custom file, and it puts it ends up putting it over here. Okay, and so my long-winded point is is that you start building actors and you get a whole bunch of them and you might have, you know, amber and a blue and a red and a green dress and, and you open it up and they all look the same and you wonder whether you put the sprites in one file or another. So, so it doesn't really matter though, because no matter which amber I open up here, here I have, uh, two of them now, uh, I was going and trying to find which one I had put the dresses in. And so if I go to the red one and load her up, I was finding that I had three dress colors in this, this actor that I've been working on today. And over here, I'm working on this actor. And say I grabbed the red dress, but I decided I wanted to change. Right in the middle of the scene, I need to have, you know, a different color then no problem, just come into this sprite editor and you see we only have one dress in here. So, so I can go out of here, go to composer mode. Sorry, 
go to composer mode and then you need the sprite editor in composer mode rather than the sprite editor in stage mode. I know it's a little confusing, but after a while it really isn't. You'll you know, you'll get this. It seems pretty complicated at first. Um but as long as you start a filing system and you start, you know, putting your sprites, say, uh, like here where I started to build this group, I'm going to build this out so I have a bunch of different colors. But here I'll grab this blue dress here that you watched me put into the other one, and it's really that easy. I mean, size the dress up, takes a couple moments, a little bit of finesse. Double check it. Not too bad. Okay, there we go. So now I have that, you know, in just a few seconds, I could go back into my image files, and no matter what character I'm working with, I could go in and do do this and add. And especially if I'm working with the same character over and over, I might build out, you know, different different clothing styles and stuff, and after a while it gets pretty confusing, but no problem if you can just come in and pop in an element anytime you want into any of the char different characters that you're working with. Okay, guys, that's it. Have a great day.